you're watching the Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Walking in Faith and Victory broadcast. So glad and, and grateful that you joined with us today. And uh, we want to teach on what we've been uh, talking about in the last two broadcasts and uh, about enlarging your faith. Amen. It's our responsibility as believers, once we're born again, to make sure we're in a place like a local church that teaches faith and the move of the Spirit so that our faith can grow. It's important that we guard what we listen to. You know, a lot of these, and, and I'm glad there's some validity to that, but you know, if, you, if all you do is listen to gospel music or Christian contemporary music and think that's the word, you know, that, that won't last because that's not the word. It, you know, most music today is designed to move you emotionally, not spiritually or especially build your faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so if you're, if you're going to have faith that grows, you're going to have to have faith that increases uh, by the Word. Amen. Growing faith only comes by the word. So in Romans chapter 10, 17 says that very thing. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <clears throat> so it's one thing to hear with these outer ears and have head knowledge. But it's just another thing when that faith from the word of God drops in your spirit and produces faith in the human spirit. Not just head knowledge. There's a lot of people, they can quote all kinds of scriptures, but they don't know how to stand in faith. And the proof is that when you're in faith is when you're faced with mountains. Amen. Mark 11, 23, 24 talks about have faith in God, the God kind of faith. And we can have that faith that whosoever shall speak to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says shall come to pass. You can have what you say. Amen. Uh, it's not God's responsibility to talk to your mountains. We need to speak to the mountains and tell the mountains wh where to go. Amen. When he says, take a mountain and be cast to the sea, he's talking about the power of faith, the power that that is spoken by a skillful believer. When we have skillful faith, we can speak to things in our life and, and, and they will obey us. That only comes by a second hearing, meaning you hear with the outer ear, but then you have an inner ear inside your spirit. And it is, it is like a gate. And, and when you feed on the word of God, and you feed day and night, the Bible says. You shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. So it's saying it's on you. Amen. It's on you to, to study the Word, uh, meditate on the Word, uh, mutter the Word. That means to speak the Word silent all day. That The, the words that you, you, you say, you can pray the Word. Amen. You can pray in the Holy Ghost and, uh, and pray in tongues. Praise the Lord. And, and that... That in it in itself uh, can build your faith, encourage your faith, or energize your faith. Amen. So the the scripture we've been using, Second Corinthians chapter ten, verse fifteen, not boasting of things without our measure. That is of our men's other men's uh, labors or ministry, but having hope. When your faith is increased, the word increased means enlarged, that shall be enlarged, that we should be enlarged, excuse me, <clears throat> for you according to our role abundantly. What he's saying here is we cherish the hope that your faith may continue. It's important to us as ministers Amen. Of the fivefold gift ministry, especially pastors, that your faith grows and in, enlarges. 
It grows and enlarges, it says in the International Standard Version. Our sphere or our ministry can enlarge. So when people's faith enlarge, uh, the, the ministry uh, enlarges. When folks' in, uh, faith grows and enlarges in a local church, it grows everything around in the church where they're planted and rooted and grow. And we already talked about that. So everything in, in this church that, that I pastor, it's very vital and important that people's, that, that, that the sheep are always trying to enlarge and increase their faith. Amen. There's a demand of faith. Uh, and, and so that's, that's on those who uh, every day get in the word of God. So when your faith increases, you and the church or ministry will increase. Praise God. Now, I want to I wanna, uh, look at some more scriptures here. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 5, talks about when the fear of the Lord is in you. So it's not just hearing the word of God, but it's really doing the word of God. And so, in, you know, a lot of people... They hear it, but they're not accountable to what they hear. The reason why they're not accountable is because they don't fear God. The word fear means to reverence, to honor, to value. If God is important to you, like things you own, could be your home, your, your money, your cars, uh, even children, family, you value them. Well, God wants us to put him first. It says, seek ye first the kingdom, well, the God of the kingdom, and then all these things shall be added to you. So there, is a, there should be a priority. It's not family, uh, church, business, whatever, uh, country. You know, people have all this order, but it's always God first. God first. If God is first, then everything falls in line. Amen. And sometimes family is important, uh, more important than, than country, or country could be more important. Just depends. It, it, the order can, can change, amen, uh, depending on the need, at, at, at what we're going through. But the, God is first. Church is first. Ministry is first. Sowing and giving to God is first. Everything that has to do with the kingdom is first. And then everything comes in line, amen, when it needs to. Praise God. So um, when the fear of the Lord is in you, when you value everything God values, when you love what God loves, and when you hate what God hates, that's what fear is. You will enlarge in your heart. So Isaiah 60 verse 5 says, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and their heart shall fear, not be afraid, but fear, the fear of God, and be enlarged. See, when you fear God, amen, and you, you, it puts us in a place of unity with God, then what happens is we enlarge. Everything around you will enlarge. Amen. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee, meaning the forces of wealth, the forces of uh, the multitudes, amen, uh, shall be converted unto thee, meaning the favor of God will come upon your life when you fear God. Uh, it says the treasures, uh, the message says treasures from across the sea and the wealth of nations will be brought to you. So these are things that when we decide we're going to enlarge our faith uh, and fear God in our heart, then things will enlarge. Amen? Praise God. So when you allow your heart to expand and when you allow it to stretch, I'm talking about your spirit, then you will enlarge in every area of your life. Now, I've said that many times, but I want you to hear that over and over. And I already gave reference to Isaiah 50. 4 verse 2, enlarge the place of your tent. It's something God said, you do it. They could have refused to obey that and not enlarge their tent and stretch out their stakes and curtains. And, and, uh, and it says, spare not. I mean, you know, that's, that's what God was saying to Israel at that time. Spare not. I mean, 
If the cords need to be lengthened, they cost more. Whatever it costs, uh, you know, obey God. Do what God says. But that's up to us. Amen. That's on us. So, <clears throat> that w- and one translation in the message says, clear lots of ground. Clear lots of ground for your tent. Amen. You know, I, I have... Uh, you know, been on hunting trips and set up a tent and 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 not cleared it out and end up sleeping on rocks or, uh, you know, sticks or whatever. Well, I tell you, that's not a comfort, comfortable night. You know, God wants to live, wants us to live a life of comfort. So, you know, there, if there's things in our life that need to be cleared out, amen, things in our tent, in our house, in our, in our, in our spirit, because we're called the temple of the Most Holy God. So this is given reference where the, the glory of God is housed in the tent or, or uh, in the temple. Amen. Some things need to be pruned in our life. Some distractions, uh, maybe wrong relationships, people that don't add to our life. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about your, the church that you belong to and all the folks inside of that church. Uh, you know, but I'm talking about outside the church. You uh, maybe family members or uh, on the workplace or friends that they they don't add to your life; they bring you down. One person in your life can take your life down, or one person that can take your life up. So it's important that we guard what's planted in us, what people say, how people react around us. Amen. If we say we're believing for this and, 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 and we're enlarging our faith for something big and great and then we hang out with somebody who got no faith and they, they got little faith and little vision and, and then they put their mouth on your vision and put words on it to, you know, to get you to doubt and, or get you in fear and, bring, and cause you to shrink <laughs> that vision. God wants us to enlarge, spare not lengthen your cords and strengthen those stakes. He said, use plenty of ropes and and drive your tent uh, pegs deep. Why? Because there's always an attack of the goodness of God in your life. There's always uh, opposition just before the breakthrough or as a door of opportunity you're going to go go through. So be willing to clear things out. Be will, willing to drive the Word of God like stakes deep in your spirit and make things strong. Like Dr. Ed said many years ago, uh, button down the hatches, meaning everything that needs to be shored up, uh, strengthened in your life, driven deep and, and, and made strong, do that. Amen, because God's fixing to do something big, but the enemy will always try to stop the greatness of God in your life. So sure up things. Clear out the lot. Amen. Amen. So when you feed on the Word of God, let me just say this to you right now. You will enlarge when you feed your spirit. Psalms 81.10 says, I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, meaning out of bondage, out of slavery, out of dominion. And open, it says, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Glory to God. What's he saying? It, see, it's hard to speak words of faith if there is none in your heart. It's hard to speak words of faith if you haven't put Put the word of God in there. Uh, words ain't going to come out if they're not put in. So when you feed on the word of God, you know, that's what the Bible says. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's talking about the word and, and you, can, you can meditate on it. You can, uh, uh, the word is like eating a good steak. You know, the Bible says there's some that are still on milk, but if I gave you the steak right now, you couldn't chew it because you ain't got you ain't grown enough to have teeth to chew on the the the, the good revelation and instruction I have for you. Amen. So it's up to us to feed on the word of God. Oh, taste and see that the word is good. And and uh, it's hard to to walk and live by faith and speak words of faith. Amen. If you haven't on purpose got the word of God and built your faith. 
Amen. You got to build your faith. To speak big words, amen, large words, extreme words, you need extreme faith. Amen. You know, there's no such thing as, as getting too fat on the word, too strong on the word. Be, be uh, extreme about, about it. Amen. Now, I'm not saying to your depth, detriment. I'm not, taking, I'm not talking about being squirrely about it. You know, well, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost 16 hours a day. Well, you can, that's in balance. You, you got to follow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may have you pay, pray 16 hours one day, but then he may have you pray uh, an hour uh, uh, the next day, or and maybe he may have you read the word and then pray or you know, you got to follow, even in your prayer time, follow the Holy Spirit. He'll lead you and guide you in the scriptures, in the revelation, and what and how to pray and what to pray. And, and so the main thing is we feed on the Word of God and follow the Holy Spirit. See, that's how you learn how to walk in the Spirit. You do it in your, your, your private place, in, in the place of prayer. In the, in the, in the, in the Bible calls it a, a, a prayer closet, meaning... Where, where is a private place for you to hear God and get in His presence and meditate and sometimes be quiet and listen? And, uh, and He'll guide us in those times. And when you le learn to hear God there, you can hear Him out there when it's noisy. You can still hear the small, still voice of God as He leads you and help you and guide you in His Word. Amen? Praise God. Well, I, I, I didn't get done with this, but... Uh, we'll, we'll just go to the next next thing and, and we're talking about how to enlarge your faith because when you do, your life will enlarge. We want you to know we love you and we'll see you at the next broadcast. God bless.